Ladies and gentlemen, how solemn and beautiful is the thought that the earliest pioneer of civilization is never the railroad, never the newspaper, never the missionary, but whiskey. <laughs> However, truth is the most valuable thing we have, so let us economize it. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for attending the services this evening. <laughs> I nearly missed it myself. I came by railroad. It was one of those trains that gets tired every seven minutes. <laughs> I has to stop and rest for three quarters of an hour. <laughs> One of the passengers advised the conductor to take the cow catcher off the front end and put it on the rear. <clears throat> because at the rate we were going, we were not going to catch any cows. <laughs> but there wasn't anything to prevent them from climbing aboard on the rear end. <laughs> If I have to go to heaven by railroad, I shall go the other way. <laughs> there was a dog who came on board long in the early part of the morning and barked steadily at nothing <laughs> till he <it> died. <laughs> I'd never seen one of his kind before. He was a long, low dog with very short legs. Something like parentheses turned the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> it was made on the plan of a bench, really. And it seemed to be satisfied. I didn't ask what kind of a dog it was or how it came to be deformed. <laughs> But well, the owner was obviously very fond of it. He said it had taken prizes in dog shows. Said people often stopped on the street to look at it. Well, this did not seem strange to me. Why, I could have told him that if you take a great long low dog like that and waddle him along the street anywhere in the world and not charge anything, people will stop and look at him. <laughs> If I were built like that, I could take prizes myself. <clears throat> I don't believe he was a dog at all. <laughs> he may have been on the verge of being a dog. <laughs> Wasn't a dog. Well, I hope you won't mind if I smoke. I can't see any harm in it, so long as there are no children present. I never began smoking myself till I was nine years old. <laughs> and even then, I was not constant. <laughs> I was always ready to reform. Uh, and if I could see any profit in it, about the only profit I could ever see in it was well, the heavenly pleasure of giving up the reform and going back to smoking again. <laughs> I come into this world asking for a light. And I expect to go out of it blowing smoke rings. Well, I think temperate temperance is best. Intemperate temperance is apt to be troublesome. When I was just a young man studying for the gallows, <laughs> I went west on the overland stage to San Francisco. I arrived there with a very bad cold. A lady at the hotel advised me to drink a quart of whiskey every 24 hours. <clears throat> and another friend recommended exactly the same thing. <clears throat> That made a half a gallon. <laughs> I 
I've been drunk before, but that is a masterpiece. <laughs> I went to bed early that night. I had a terrible nightmare. I dreamt I was baptized. <laughs> About two o'clock in the morning, I had a WC call. And uh, jumped up in the dark and ran out into the hall in my nightshirt without a candle. Then it occurred to me there was no W.C. on my floor. Well, the hall was pitch dark, but I, I groped along upstairs and found the W.C. there. And then I started home. I went upstairs and pawed along to what I thought was my room. Then I remembered that I had gone upstairs when I should have gone. Wait a minute, I wasn't so sure about that either. <laughs> My mind lost confidence and began to wander. I was no longer sure what floor I was on. I was lost. The minute I realized that, the rest of my mind went. <laughs> but a man can't stand still in a dark hall at two o'clock in the morning in his nightshirt, looking like an envelope with no address on it. <laughs> he can't do that and feel content. He's got to go somewhere. I groped up and down a couple of flights, torch lighting the way with profanity. <laughs> you see, I couldn't go down to the ground floor and start fresh and count up because there was a ball going on down there. Whole ballroom full of young ladies, a dangerous place to get caught in, clothed as I was. And I'm not in my right mind. <laughs> And uh, pretty soon I heard those girls coming up to bed. Well, I didn't know if I was on a W.C. floor or not, but I scampered through the nearest door and prayed that it would be the right one. And it was. I stood there in that humble shelter, <laughs> happy as a martyr when the fire won't burn. <laughs> I thought how glad I should be to live there always. <laughs> Go out no more among life's troubles and dangers. Several young ladies applied for admission, <laughs> but I was not receiving. <laughs> Thursdays being my day. <laughs> Well, when the house was dead and dark, I groped down to the ground floor and counted my way up home. Then my temper got a fire and I let her go. And right in the midst of that great eruption, an admiring female voice said, When you're through with your prayers, I'd like to know what you're doing in my room. <laughs> well, I was... I was looking for a job out there uh, in San Francisco, but I was very particular about the kind of job I would get. I didn't want to work. 